Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we've got a new video format. It is Game Dev News. I'm going to come up with a better name, take your suggestions down below, but the entire idea here is a bunch of stuff happened in the world of game development, and instead of doing a couple like two to three minute long videos that were sort of, yeah, I decided to merge them all together into one video. Let me know what you think of this format, and give me some naming suggestions down below if I do this again in the future. So that's what we got today. We got three separate pieces of news from the world of game development. I just turned news into a newses. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at the first thing that happened. And this one is Zenko. Remember Zenko? Zenko is the former game engine known as Paradox. This is an engine that is renamed quite often. And it was renamed again, but there was a good reason for this. I don't know if I like the new name, to be honest, but Zenko is now known as Strive. Now, if you don't know what Zenko is, Zenko is a C-sharp powered, now open source, previously made by Silicon Studios, um, kind of Unity-like C Sharp game engine. Um, it's really nice. I'm actually quite a fan of it. And 4.0 is coming up soon. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. And of course, I will cover it when it happens. But they renamed to Strive. Now, every time you rename something, you lose all of the branding, you lose a lot of momentum. And people go, oh, wait a minute, Zenko? What's the Zenko? And then, you know, you lose some. Some name brand recognition, you lose Google search results, it makes your uh, web links all a little weird. It's not something that you should do lightly. So why did they change the name from, Stri from, from Zenko to Stride? Well, the one big reason is they're trying to join the uh, .NET Foundation, a nonprofit organization. In order to do that, you kind of have to be unencumbered by trademarks. You, either you um, free those trademarks up to and give them to, um, ownership to the foundation, or you can't be part of that foundation. And the problem here is, as I mentioned earlier on, Zenko came from the world of being uh, part of Silicon Studios. They spun it off, they're open sourcing it as a result, but the Zenko trademark was still owned by Silicon Studios. Uh, it was it made it too difficult as a result to transfer it over to the .NET Foundation. Uh, after back and forth with the uh, Silicon Studios legal department, Zen2, and the .NET Foundation, it just kind of ran into a wall. So in the end, they renamed to Stride. Stride's logo is right here. Like I said, version 4.0 is coming out soon. If you have never checked out Stride before, uh, it is a really cool game engine. It, it's been a little quiet as of late, so I'm interested to see what 4.0 brings us. But as you can see, it, it's a good-looking engine. I've done some um, I've done some videos on it, so I will link to some of the resources in the linked article down below. I'm going to do all three of the sets of links in a single article uh, today with a link down below. But I will link out to some you know learn more type resources. Obviously, Obviously, the stuff that I have is from when it was still called Zenko, but nothing changed. It's literally just a rebranding at this point. So Zenko and Stride, if you already know how to use Zenko, you know how to use Stride. But apparently, you do need to now get a new updater. Uh, so that is the one change. Let me know what you think of the name Stride. I, uh... It's okay. And now actually in news, we have another rebranding. And this one is really hard for me to cover. And that's exactly why they rebranded it. There is a, a game company out there. It's been around for like 10 or 15 years. Uh, you can read it on the screen here uh, for obvious stupid reasons because of the way YouTube behaves. I have to stay away from using certain words, even if they have absolutely nothing to do uh, with what I'm talking about. And actually, I, I covered these guys a little while back because they just went open source with uh, their product. And the problem is their product now has a somewhat unfortunate name, even though that name has been that name for a good decade plus now. Uh, yeah, I can see why that that is not a name that you're going to want. I'm actually kind of curious to see what the beer does going forward, the beer that shares a name with this product. Um, are they going to rebrand? It's, it's kind of a toxic word now. And all of the search results when you search for it are going to be on a different subject. It's kind of like, you know, naming your product, I don't know, swine. Yeah, swine. We'll go with that one. And then all of a sudden something happens and then boom, swine is a bad word. Well, that's kind of what happened here. So what they've done is they've rebranded Corona to Solar 2D. Now, in this case... I, again, I actually don't think I like the name either, uh, but it's searchable. So there is a good thing there. There's the problem with Stride. Stride you can't put down and say Stride, Google, enter, and ever get anything. Solar 2D, it's going to work in that regard really soon. I just don't know any significance to calling it Solar 2D. I do like the logo, though. Um, we've also got some updates on what's going on in the world of Corona, uh, including um, they're moving so they're moving to a fully... Um, 100% open source approach and they're porting some of their services. So previously, there were things that ran on their build servers. Now they're trying to make those so you can run them all locally instead. Uh, so that's one of the things they're working on today. Offline builds are in the works. Also, some of the plugin stuff that they worked with before, they used to make their money off of plugins. Obviously, too, now that they've got a full open source model, they're trying to fund in a different way. So now they fund using GitHub sponsors or Patreon. Uh, so it's a really, really robust Lua game engine library. If you've never checked out, um, 
uh, stride. Hey, I can, I can, oh, no, I mixed them up. Solar, Solar 2D. If you've never checked out Solar 2D, also known as that, um, it is a very interesting project. It's uh, a 2D game engine, thousands of, uh, like there's literally over a thousand built-in API calls to do just about everything you could think of. It's almost like this fat monolithic library of, you know, game dev routines. So if you've needed something over the past, you know, five, six, seven years, whatever, they've been kind of adding it in. So there's things in there for in-app purchases, graphic manipulation, and so on. So if you're looking to create a 2D game, especially a mobile cross-platform game, um, <laughs> I can't say the word, um, Solder 2D is very battle-tested. Even if it has a brand new name, there is a huge number of things out there. It's also cross-platform on almost every platform you can think of, especially in the mobile space. Um, Again, 1,000 API, 1,000 plus API things. Lua is the language that you use. It's got a real-time simulator, and they're going to soon have offline builds. It's an interesting project, especially if you like the Lua language. And as I mentioned earlier on, when it was previously called this, it has a huge amount of battle testing behind it. Uh, by the way, in this case, the URL is still staying the same, whereas in this case, they actually rebranded the URL to stride3d.net. And we got a bit of a spoiler at what's coming up next. So the final piece of news, sort of, I got one last announcement at the end, but you already know about it if you're regular to the channel. But the final thing that I'm going to talk about externally is Godot's showreels are up. I think for the last three years, maybe two. Uh, so this might be the third year, might be the fourth year, I forget which. Uh, but they've basically done a showreel up on YouTube of kind of the the stuff that's in progress for the Godot game engine. It's just sort of like a sizzle reel. It's really common from the world of CG applications. It used to be like, you know, um, Autodesk, Max, or Maya would do a brag reel of here's what we've done, or Blender, or so on, with this engine, or sorry, with this tool. And now we're seeing game engines do sizzle reels more and more too. So if you want an idea of what is in development and what Godot is capable of, they've done a show reel. In fact, they've actually done two showreels. And this year they had over uh, 200 submissions for games or titles being developed using Godot. So there's a pair of videos you can watch. The first one is, uh, you know, desktop and console gamers. The second one is the mobile showcase. I'm not sure if they should be splitting them, especially if you want to get like lots of views, you're going to feature this on your, you know, your front page or whatever as to, you know, show your game engine off. I would have probably done one video personally, but I can understand why they separated the two. I just personally probably wouldn't have. So, uh, really nice. Uh, thanks to Hugo for doing the editing um, and these two for providing the music, but these are the uh, the showreels for uh, the Godot game engine. So if you wanna check out what the Godot is capable of and what kind of projects are in the works, I will of course link to both of those videos in the linked article down below. And the final thing that I'm going to talk about is a little bit of self-plugging. Back in, ooh, that sounds bad. Uh, anyways, um, now that I'm done self-plugging, uh, on April the 13th, we hit the 100,000 miles stones for subscribers. I did a video about it, by the way. I also did a face reveal on that video. If you happen to miss it, you're not missing out on much, but um, that was kind of a huge milestone. As part of it, to celebrate, I also did a, um, a Discord server, uh, you know, because the community here at Game for Scratch, you guys are all really cool, awesome people, and a lot of people have been calling for a Discord server to kind of, you know, keep chats and, and talks and conversations around the topic of game development in another space. So that's exactly what I have done and I don't have it running. One sec. Okay, so here it is. This is the Discord server. This is running in the uh, browser. There is, of course, a Discord client. The invite link is available right here. I will throw that invite link down below. But what we've done basically is kind of kept it a little simple. I apparently have a gibberish web account on this uh, browser that we, we ended up here with. We can see here, nice community broken down right now. We're in game dev as topic, game engines, art, place to showcase your work and what you've done. Uh, we got a little bit of place just to ask for help or talks about general game development subjects. And of course, we go into the world of off topic if you want to, you know, babble about whatever. We got a voice chat server. You'll never catch me in there, by the way. I despise voice chat, but there is the option there if that's what you want to do. And of course, we have announcements for you know, any new video or post up on, um, you know, Game From Scratch, or Game From Scratch YouTube channel or whatever, or something I just found genuinely interesting for the community. It can be found under the announcements as well. Now, as the community grows, I will start splitting things down into uh, more and more um, channels as we need them. If things don't grow to that way, we'll keep it as a nice uh, tight knit community we've got right now. But I think we're sitting at I don't know, what are we at? 1, 2, 3, 19, uh, 434, 
How many people are offline? Oh, went too far. I don't know. I think we're sitting somewhere around 2,000 people here already. So it's really kind of co turned into a great community. But I'm going to plug it right now to turn it into an even greater community. So if you're interested in game development, that is what the Game Development Discord is all about. The cool thing here, a lot of times you've got a Discord for something like Unreal Engine, Unity Engine, the Godot Game Engine, or the library like Raylib, or uh, the Beef Programming Language I just featured the other day. Those kind of things are great for having their individual Discord server. But if you want something just about game development in general, like the top level themes or you know if you want to compare engines or try to get advice on which engine or technology to work with or if you just want a place to again showcase what you're working on get some feedback from other game developers and so on that is what the game from scratch discord is perfect for and that is my my goal with it i'm not going to be creating godot channels or um, unity channels or unreal engine channels specifically because there's discords for that this is more about game development on the whole so if you're interested and you want to check that community out i will toss that link uh somewhere on the link link and uh, I'm actually going to add that link to Dev Game and Game From Scratch so you can permanently get there at any time if you so wish to join. And I recommend it. It's a fun place. Come and hang out. I, by the way, I also don't know a damn thing about Discord. Thanks to the people who have helped me get this thing set up. But it's going to grow and evolve over time. So if you're interested in game development in general, do check that out. All right, that is it. That is uh, this weekend in game development. We've got a couple of renames. Uh, Blah 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 Lab is now Solar 2, uh, Zenko is now Strike, Godot released their Sizzle Reel, and Game From Scratch has a Discord that you should just go and join right now, and maybe talk about this video there. Also, let me know what you think of this format. Do you like the amalgamated idea? What name would you suggest, once again, if I do this again in the future? Obviously, I'm only going to do this if there's enough news that isn't big enough to justify its own video, but together is worth talking about, and I thought today was. Let me know. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.